Komodo dragons, the world's largest lizards, are apex predators native to a few Indonesian islands, including Komodo, Rinka, and Flores. Their massive size, reaching up to 10 feet and over 300 pounds, makes them formidable hunters capable of taking down deer, water buffalo, and even humans. This documentary explores a hypothetical scenario where thousands of Komodo dragons are left on an island devoid of their usual prey. Such an experiment, while never conducted, draws on real-world observations of their behavior under resource scarcity to predict dramatic shifts in their ecology. Komodo dragons typically rely on ambush predation, using camouflage and patience to strike prey like Javanrusa deer or carrion. Their keen sense of smell, aided by a forked tongue and Jacobson's organ, detects carcasses up to six miles away. On an island with zero meat, traditional hunting strategies would falter as prey populations vanish. Komodo dragons would likely adapt by intensifying scavenging efforts, scouring the landscape for any organic matter, including plant debris or washed-up marine life. Historically, Komodo dragons exhibit remarkable flexibility, surviving on islands with fluctuating resources due to their low metabolic rate and ability to consume 80% of their body weight in one meal. This adaptability would be tested as starvation pressures forced them to explore new food sources, potentially including smaller reptiles or insects. Group hunting, a rare reptilian trait, has been observed among Komodo dragons when tackling large prey. Without meat, cooperative behaviors might initially intensify as dragons pool efforts to locate scarce resources, but competition could soon fracture these alliances. Social hierarchies among Komodo dragons are strictly size-based, with larger individuals dominating feeding sites and mating opportunities. In a meatless environment, dominant dragons would likely monopolize any discovered food, pushing smaller ones to the fringes or into riskier foraging zones. As resources dwindle, territorial disputes would escalate, with males, known for ritualized combat during mating season, engaging in more frequent and lethal clashes. These territorial wars could reshape the island's spatial dynamics, concentrating dragons in areas with even minimal food traces. Cannibalism, already documented among Komodo dragons, would likely surge under extreme scarcity. Larger dragons often prey on juveniles, who typically escape by living arboreally until they grow. Without prey, adults might target each other, amplifying mortality rates. Juvenile Komodo dragons, vulnerable to cannibalistic adults, rely on tree dwelling to survive their early years. On a meatless island, their arboreal refuge might offer temporary safety, but starvation could force them into open terrain, exposing them to predation. The emergence of cannibalistic behaviors would not only reflect desperation but also serve as a grim population control mechanism. By reducing the number of competitors, cannibalism could temporarily stabilize the population, though at the cost of genetic diversity and long-term resilience. Komodo dragons' reproductive strategies, including parthenogenesis in females, allow them to persist in low-density populations. However, starvation could reduce breeding frequency, as females require substantial energy to produce eggs, potentially leading to a sharp decline in hatchlings. Mating season, occurring between May and August, typically involves males fighting for access to females. On a meatless island, weakened males might struggle to compete, disrupting pair bonds and further suppressing reproduction rates. The island's ecosystem, already fragile without prey species, would face cascading effects from the dragon's altered behaviors. Their scavenging and burrowing could accelerate soil erosion, while seed dispersal via droppings, a minor ecological role, would cease without food intake. Komodo dragons regulate herbivore populations, preventing overgrazing and maintaining habitat balance in their natural range. Without prey, their role as apex predators would vanish, potentially allowing invasive plants to proliferate if herbivore carcasses were absent. Long-term population control would hinge on the balance between cannibalism, starvation, and reproduction. Historical data suggests Komodo dragon populations can shrink in response to prey scarcity, as seen on Flores, where habitat loss reduced their numbers. On Flores, Komodo dragons adapted to reduced prey by decreasing body size, a response to resource limitations. A meatless island might trigger similar downsizing, with surviving dragons evolving smaller, leaner forms over generations. 
The absence of meat would also disrupt the dragon's energy-efficient lifestyle as their low metabolic rate relies on periodic large meals. Prolonged fasting could lead to organ failure or weakened immune systems, increasing susceptibility to disease. Komodo dragon's venom, once thought to be bacteria-laden saliva, contains toxins that induce shock and prevent clotting in prey. Without prey to bite, this adaptation would offer no survival advantage, potentially becoming a vestigial trait in a meatless context. Expert analysis reveals Komodo dragon's resilience stems from their ectothermic nature and behavioral flexibility, allowing survival in harsh conditions. Yet, a meatless island would push these traits to their limits, with many dragons succumbing to starvation or conflict. Conservation efforts, like those in Komodo National Park, highlight the importance of prey availability for dragon survival. Studies show populations stabilize when deer and pigs thrive, underscoring the catastrophic impact of a preyless scenario. Rare footage from Komodo National Park captures dragon scavenging and hunting, behaviors that would intensify on a meatless island. These visuals underscore their predatory prowess, but also hint at the chaos of resource-driven aggression. Human impacts, such as habitat loss and poaching, have already reduced Komodo dragon populations to fewer than 3,500. A meatless island experiment would mirror these threats, amplifying existing pressures on their endangered status. The cultural significance of Komodo dragons to local communities, who view them as kin, adds complexity to their conservation. On a meatless island, human intervention might be needed to prevent total collapse, raising ethical questions about such experiments. The long-term ecological balance of the island would hinge on whether any dragons survive the initial die-off. If a small population persists, their reduced numbers could allow limited recovery, though the ecosystem would remain fundamentally altered. Komodo dragons' evolutionary history, spanning millions of years, showcases their ability to endure isolated, resource-scarce environments. However, a meatless island would represent an unprecedented challenge, testing the limits of their adaptive capacity. The hypothetical scenario reveals the fragility of island ecosystems and the cascading effects of disrupting food chains. Komodo dragons, as apex predators, are linchpins in their habitats, and their collapse would signal broader ecological failure. Ultimately, this thought experiment underscores the importance of preserving Komodo dragons' natural habitats and prey base. Conservation efforts must prioritize ecosystem integrity to ensure these ancient reptiles continue to thrive. The crazy result of leaving thousands of Komodo dragons on a meatless island would be a stark lesson in ecological interdependence. Their altered behaviors, from cannibalism to territorial wars, would reshape their population and the island's future, leaving a cautionary tale for humanity. Thanks for watching. Every story matters, from the everyday to the extraordinary. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for your next world discovery. It's completely free and means the world to me. What topic should we explore next? Drop it in the comments below. See you in the next one.